best ways or uh, the most popular way of trading CFDs is trading with candlesticks. Now, candlesticks are part, how do I put it? Many traders or novices get mixed up with candlesticks. Not, they have these preconceived notions. We have candlestick charts, which is how we put information on a chart. We have candlestick analysis, and we also have candlestick pattern recognition. Now, most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis, but most of what they learn is usually useless. So let me hop up a live chart here for us first. There we go. So we're just looking at the Euro US dollar and this is a live chart, it's my standard chart. This is the candlestick chart as opposed to a, where's the word bar? Uh oh. Opposed to a line chart or opposed to a bar chart. Now a bar chart and a candlestick chart are virtually the same because you only have the same pieces of information. You have the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now each candle on a chart, and we happen to be looking at a one hour chart. Each one of these candles denotes a one hour trading session, whether you're looking at a line chart, a bar chart, or a candlestick chart. The Candle is made by putting a dot at the open, a dot at the close, a little line, of, I'm sorry, and then a dot at the high and a dot at the low. We connect the low to the open or the close dot and these are called wicks. We then draw a little line across here and we connect these together and this is called the body of the candle. The body of the candle denotes the open and the close and the wicks are the high and the low. Now when we started trading, well candlesticks been around since the 1700s, but when we started online, not even say, let's take the word online, let's say retail trading and charting. We were hands on, when I used to sit in the pits at Chicago Board of Exchange, we would sit in the pits with our graph paper and our pencils and chart our, and draw on our charts. We were hand charting. There was no computers. There was no automatic charts. And therefore, most people used bar charts, bar charts, because a bar chart is the same as a candlestick. It's the open, the high, the low, and the close. What makes the candlestick different is if the open was lower than the close. So in other words, the price moved up in that session. We would then, today we draw this in with green. In the old days, we would just leave that candlestick empty. And so it was referred to in the old days as a white candle. Today, when the open is higher than the close, it means the price fell in that session, we color it in with red. In the old days, we would color it in with the end of our pencil. And so we would have black and white candles. Today, we have red and green because we have these ultra incredible modern things called computers that do all this charting for us. Now, the fact is reds and greens don't mean anything. Reds and greens stop and go high and low. It's just a color that became popular in the markets. Technically, we could make our candles blue and yellow. Doesn't change anything as long as we know what is a 
bullish candle or and what is a bearish candle, what colors represent them, they're perfectly fine. So sometimes you'll find some trading brands that their charts are all in their branding colors. You can change them again. But again, it comes down to just knowing which colors to know bearish and bullish. Now, this is candlestick charting. That's all it is, is putting your charts, whether you're using a candlestick chart, a bar chart, or a a uh, line chart that's all it is now a lot of traders like candlesticks only because they like the colors me personally i was a bar chart trader for a zillion years now i love candlesticks only because i have the flexibility and it's easier to understand the story of price when looking at candlesticks because the colors help you but believe me, candlesticks are not telling you because you see an abundance of red that you should be going short or an abundance of green and you should be going long. In other words, a lot of traders would look and say, look at all that green, there's great big green candles. I should be buying. Well, maybe you should, maybe this uptrend is over. In fact, it probably is with this doji appearing here. But the number of reds to greens doesn't really tell you anything. So don't get yourself stuck in that part of the application. Now, there are many, many, many candlestick patterns. Like this, for instance, is a doji. We might have a bullish or bearish engulfing candle. We could have many different candlestick patterns. Memorizing these patterns is basically detrimental because you get yourself so concerned with pattern recognition you forget to pay any attention to what price is trying to tell you so what we should be looking at is what's called candlestick analysis so the standard approach to candlestick analysis is basic pattern recognition which may fail to work in real-time trading you can't skip straight forward to the advanced candlestick analysis without knowing some basics. But if you don't know the basics, that's fine. I got you covered. So remember, each candlestick represents a data set of the complete price action during that trading session. So as I showed you already, We draw a line across at the close, a line across at the open, a dot at the highest point, a dot at the lowest point, and connect those bodies to the candles. And then if the, can the price went up, we color it green. If the price came down from the open to close, we color it red today, or whatever color you prefer. Now, the thing that's important here is the shape and the size of the body. And the shape or the distance or the length of what we call the, the wicks. And these tell you about what that candle is trying to tell you. So when Forex traders first start out, they usually learn about candlesticks, but what they usually learn is useless. They normally see a list of candlestick patterns and each pattern has a set in stone definition and that's the only meaning they can have. So we have things like hammer, inverted hammer, doji, Dragonfly doji, bullish spinning top, shooting stars, hanging men. And you're supposed to memorize these. And when you see them in your charts, you're supposed to do something specific. Well, this isn't candlestick analysis. This is candlestick recognition. And for a price action trader, it's totally useless. So let's go back over to my chart for a second here. Because today, we have our candlestick chart. And if we wanted to use pattern recognition, our computers are so smart, we could just simply click on the patterns we want to look at and 
So I've clicked off three of the most popular patterns, doji, bullish, engulfing, and bearish, and my computer's just telling me when they've occurred. Now, if I put my highlighter on them, it's going to tell me exactly what I'm seeing and exactly what I'm supposed to do. Not because it's analyzing the price action. This is a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. And when it appears, it's telling me this is what I'm supposed to do. Well, that's hogwash. And that's called pattern recognition. All you're doing is memorizing flashcards. You remember when you went to school and you have to study for an exam and you write them all on your little flashcards and you you memorize this question and memorize that answer, or memorize this question, memorize that answer. But if you went to class the next day and that professor reworded his questions, you were in trouble because you weren't actually learning, you were memorizing. And that's what happens when you memorize all of these patterns and charts and candlesticks instead of reading them. Now there happens to be 16 predominant candlestick patterns and a set of 32 major or top candlestick patterns. And you want to memorize all them? Fine, I'm not telling you not to learn them. But if you want to go looking for spinning tops and, and evening stars and morning stars and shooting stars and inverted hammer and hanging, spend, you can spend your whole day looking for them and your whole day memorize them. But if you want to look and be able to look at a candlestick and look at a chart, and read what that candlestick is trying to tell you and analyze that price and analyze what those candlesticks are trying to tell you. That's candlestick analysis. So we have three different classes. We have charting, okay, putting it on charts. We have pattern recognition. And then lastly, we have candlestick analysis. Candlestick analysis is the most important part of using candlesticks. And this is where a lot of traders get mixed up because they never get past this pattern recognition. So thinking about candles as just patterns is counterproductive. It makes you a worse trader and it could lead you to make massive mistakes. Why? Giving a pattern, a set definition leads to tunnel vision. When you see this specific pattern, you assume that something will happen. Well, that's not really how candlesticks work. All candlesticks need to be assessed based on the candlesticks around them as well as many other factors. So the truth is, normally when people see this candlestick shape or this candlestick pattern on chart, they will assume, assume something because this is a specific pattern. So normally this is called a spinning top. And if you read the definition, it means that a reversal is imminent, which can be true uh, some of the time. However, the same pattern can also t tell you that a continuation is imminent. It can mean uh, prices temporarily stalling. It can mean a lot of different things. So thinking of candles as simple patterns is the wrong way to do things. You need to look beyond the pattern and read the story of price. And what's the story of price? But every single candle on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you've got the story of price. So the foundation for my CFD trading strategy is reading and understanding the story of price. Reading and understanding the story of price is vital. It's vital because it allows you to answer one of the most important questions. You know what that question is? Who is in control of price? And this question only has three possible answers, buyers, sellers, or neither. Being able to accurately answer this question is vital. Because when you saw, like when I showed you before, that nice defined uptrend, when you look at the end of it, you see that the buyers have lost control. Okay. When you know, when you see that's happening, that's an important piece of information. Being able to accurately answer the question is vital. If you are about to enter a short trade and you ask yourself who's in control of the price and the answer to the buyer is, well, perhaps selling is not a great idea at the moment. So let's break down the story of price. Now, if you look at the three highlighted candles on the left side here, it's easy to conclude. Now we're gonna break this chart down and we're looking at just throw the three candles. And so say we're just looking at that segment. It's easy to conclude that the sellers are in control of price. 
right? And what would you want to do? You want to be selling into that market. The candles all close lower than they open. They all created new lows beyond the previous candles low, and they all had small upper wicks in comparison with the candle bodies. Now, again, I told you it's important you look at wicks and the bodies. Okay. When you have average sized bodies of candles and average wicks, and we're not, there's no counting of price, but it's really when they don't look oblong. Okay. When a wick is m very, very long, either up or down, it's telling you have to use a slightly definition of that candle. Because say for instance, this candle here had a long upper wick. Same body, same open, same close, same low. But it had a long upper wick. Okay. That definition of this particular candle at that moment is slightly different because this is telling you the bears, I'm sorry, the bulls, the buyers, mounted a huge amount of buying pressure and they entered the market and tried to sustain the market but weren't able to and the bulls the bears were able to pull it down get it down a little farther and it closed pretty close to that low that meant the bulls charged but they just couldn't muster anything when we look at the actual wick that it has right now it doesn't tell you that same story because this is the same wicks as this story so this is telling you here the bears the bulls weren't so strong they couldn't muster anything and the bears just main control of the main control may maintain control of the markets well that's a slightly different variation than we had talked about if this had a long upper wick okay so you have to use these in your understanding of the markets now, at this point, we have seen these three candles happen. Then we get this next candle. This next candle here becomes critically important. Even though this can be defined as maybe as a doji, okay? It's important because of a couple things. And it's not important only because it's got a a green instead of a red body. Okay. It's important because number one, we saw the body of the candle get very small. When the body of the candle gets very small, it's telling it the buyers have indecision. Those sellers that were in the market before don't know if they keep wanting, keep want, continuing wanting to sell. They don't know they're going to continue pushing the price down. Now we see with the wick, they pushed the price down fairly well, but the bulls were able at this point to gather a little bit of momentum and pull it back up here because the bears or the selling pressure wasn't that strong. So when it has a short upper wick and a small body and a long lower wick in this case, reversed if the market was going the other way, this is what we call an indecision candle. Okay. This is not a pattern. This is not a memorization of anything. This happens to be when this, when you're looking at the scenario, scenario and interpreting it, this is explaining to us what's happening with the buyers and the sellers. And this is reading the story of price because you're reading, you're not memorizing anything. You're reading the story on a live chart to see what price is telling you. So what's an indecision candle? What well, indecision candles occur when neither buyers or sellers can gain or maintain control of price. They are common and they appear all the time. But if used the right way, they can be very powerful. And this is important because they appear all the time, but just because they appear doesn't mean anything to you. You have to be reading the story of price. You have to be reading what price is trying to tell you. So here we have the reverse scenario. Right? Okay, price had moved up 
and we're just using three candles in example. It could be five candles, it could be seven candles, it could be nine, and it could have had some red, small red candles in between. We're looking at who was in control of the markets. The bulls have been constantly pushing up this market. Price got to some range, and we get this indecision candle. But when this indecision candle happens to fall, in this case, it would be a resistance zone from support and resistance. And this indecision candle falls right on that in that resistance zone. And tonight's class is not about support and resistance. Okay, if you don't understand the concept of support and resistance, you need to come to one of our classes because it takes an entire class to explain that concept. But this is where price had in the past had hemmed and hawed. This was a strategically important step. This price in the past was strategically important in that movement in prior times to that particular asset. So when we drew this way back when and projected it out in the future, it happens to be that a price is moving up, this indecision candle formed right on that zone. Well, that's telling you that resistance zone is working, it's holding its own, okay? This is where these buyers that were pushing the price up said, uh-oh, we're not sure it's gonna go up anymore. And they became full of indecision. When it happens on, a support or resistance level, it's telling us a lot about what the market is trying to tell us. And this is again, using candlesticks to read the story of price. When price hits resistance, we get an indecision candle for me. So let's break down the, that into a story so you understand why it indicates indecision. So, we had a large upper wick that shows the buyers tried to continue the bullish trend, but failed. So remember this candle right here? Long upper wick, short, bot short lower wick, skinny body. So that large upper wick right here in the blue, showed us that the buyers tried to push the markets up. They started out with some momentum, but they lost their momentum. And the sellers took control of price and were able to push it down. So it closed in red. The buyers should have been able to maintain it up here, but they couldn't. The sellers ended up pushing down, made a low, and then closed pretty much slightly below the open. So we had a small bearish body. The small bearish body shows the sellers were able to close lower than the open. This is significant because in the three candles before this price consistently closed higher than the open. This shows that the buyers are losing power. And then we had a small lower wick. So remember an indecision candle has a very important, has some very important features. So just because you have a candle forming, and it's got a small body, doesn't say it's indecision, doesn't mean where it is. And it's got to have the wicks that tell you something. So the small lower wick shows that the sellers were not able to gain much ground either. This tells that the sellers are not strong enough to turn price around completely. However, they are strong enough to stall buyer's movement. So all together, this indecision candle forming right after strong bullish candles suggest that the power has shifted from a decidedly bullish market to an undecided market. While the sellers are not in control, neither are the buyers. But there's one more thing we need to look at. The indecision candle is forming on top of a resistance area. Okay. That is the clue to reading price. When this indecision candle forms on the resistance area, now you have two things that are stopping price movement. So if you remember, we talked about resistance being a sell area and support being a buy area. So the image shows us three strong bullish candles heading into resistance and then bam, right on that resistance zone, we get the formation of an indecision candle. This is price 
talking to you directly. It's yelling off of the charts, telling you something. So price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. This tells us the selling area is working. When price pushed into a, an area, sell orders were triggered and buyers could no longer continue up. This is a story of price for this particular chart. Now, indecision candles have an entire trading strategy. You can trade them successfully every time this story unfolds. So this story gives us a nice little price action trade setup. So price action allows you to take many different types of trades. Reversals, continuation, rain, swings, breakouts, and scalps, to name a few. So how do we spot a reversal trade? Reversals occur quite often. But if you don't know what you look for, you cannot trade them. Reversals are one of the strongest price setups and one of the easiest to trade because they occur so often. You can trade this setup exclusively. In fact, for years, my trading strategy focused on reversals only. So we have the preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. So we've already talked about the preceding trend. Now, some people qualify this long candle as a preceding trend. I say it needs to be a minimum of three candles and anything that's long and bizarre like this, I say you can't trade anyway. So the preceding trend is simple. If you see a strong move heading into an area of support and resistance, you can consider that the preceding trend. There's no rules about the preceding trend. Like I said, it can be three, five, seven, nine. Can it can be sprinkled with a little couple little opposite color ones. Okay. What you're looking for is just a strong move. Because what becomes critically important is the, the, the formation of that indecision candle directly on that support or resistance zone. And like I said, that reversal candle does not have to be the opposite color. It helps us qualify our trade, but it doesn't have to be the opposite. It must have developed on an area of support and resistance, not near. Not, you don't want to push this trade if it isn't in your support and resistance areas that you've pre-drawn on your charts. It's not a valid reversal setup. So an indecision candle and a bullish preceding trend indicates that buyers are possibly looking, losing control and, bear, and sellers are gaining, or the opposite in the other direction. However, an indecision candle does not indicate that price will reverse with any degree of certainty. An indecision candle indicates only one thing, indecision. But if you stop and think about it, if we have indecision developing right on a price, an important price level, whether it's support or resistance, it's a strategic price level. At that point, if we're looking for a reversal trade up and set up and we get the indecision candle with all the other key pieces of information, we can very easily have a trade set up. We would look for price to fall. We would look to put our stop loss at the height of the break, the can, the, the highest wick. We look to put our entry point at the next candle below that resistance area and trade it to go down. If it happens to be that it doesn't work and moves up, we get stopped out here with a small little loss. But we get stopped out pretty quickly. If it moves back up from here, it doesn't even go back down a little bit. Our trade's never executed. We never have a trade. So what we've done is we've isolated the three scenarios. Trade moves in the direction you want it to go. Profit. Trade doesn't move in the direction you want it to go. Never executed. And one third trade moves against you. But you set your stop loss so close that you get stopped out with a short little loss. Well, this gives you a great setup. So what? Your trade never gets executed. You don't care. You didn't lose any money. You didn't get any money. Trade gets executed, moves in your favor, you made money. 
trade moves against you after it fell below your resistance area and you get stopped out, you're perfectly happy because we know that we're always going to suffer small losses. So in this case, we saw a transition of power from a bullish preceding trend to a bearish reversal trend separated by a stall of resistance. So where do we enter the trade though? Well, you know what a reversal trade looks like. You know that you could enter it after indecision and before the reversal trend. So I'll show you how I use my trading strategy. My trading strategy is built on reversal trading only. It is now expanded beyond that, but if we're looking at individual setups and we're looking at a reversal trade setup, entering trades does not need to be difficult. My goal is to keep everything simple, getting in at the right time. So remember, we had the preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. So keep in mind, failed trades happen. There's nothing you can do about them, but getting in right at the right time lowers your percentage of failed trades. May, many people wait for a candle close to get in, but I've tested this thoroughly and waiting for closes to get you in too late. So in the image below, you'll see that the first candle in the reversal trend closing far from support. So we want to get in, not when this closes, we want to get in the minute it breaks in our direction, because we're looking at a reversal trade outside that resistance zone. So we would have executed, set up this trade to execute here, stop here. Okay. Again, if it went this way, never went up at all, we would have never had a trade execute. If it had gone up a little and then fell back down, we would have suffered a small loss or it would have gone in our favor. But because we don't know how long this reversal is going to take, if it's going to be a full trend reversal or just a reversal back up to the next level, we want to capitalize on that. If we had waited for the close of this trade to enter that market, we might have not ever seen any profit or seen a very small amount of profit. So this means you would have lost out on potential, which is obviously not good. The key to reversal trading or any trading that matter is getting in at the right time. So anytime I have a choice of a setup that gives me three scenarios, that means instead of having two choices, I've got three, it means I have 33% chance of making good money a 33% chance of never executing a trade and only 33% chance of a small loss. So Okay, somebody typed in a quick question I'm going to answer it. And they asked me about there are other types of candlesticks, okay? And these are all, I'll show them all to you. They're all variations on the same thing. Okay. We have hollow candles. We have Helenki Ashi. We have Renko. We have all these different types of candles. We have hollow candles. All, they are all variations on the same thing with different interpretations, with different strategies. If you want to go off into those far off things, fine, learn them and become experts at them. Okay, there are many, many, many things you can learn in the marketplace that are away from the standard basics, but you have to become the expert in them. Okay. So are they useful? If you have a strategy, you're a trader who's using them, you're the trader who learned how to use them correctly and interpret them, they're very helpful. Like I said, I was a bar chart trader only because bars were easier to draw in the old days. Now I'm a candlestick trader. But you have to be an expert in all these things. Stop looking for these weird name things to tell you, I got a system for you. Okay. 
if some if you want to learn about these type of candles and learn to master them, then they're great for you. So here we would again, we would set our entry point. Don't forget, we're looking at a reversal trade. So the market went up. We're looking for the market to come down. So we would put our entry below the the slightly below the the lower wick, our stop loss above the upper wick. The market's sitting at the close up here. If it falls down to here, we're going to execute our trade and we will make the profit going down. If it never comes down to this point, our trade will never get executed. If it comes down to this point, and executes our trade and then reverses to continue up in that trade, we would have gotten stopped out here. So you have no trade executed, trade with profit executed, trade with reversal and stopped out executed. So keep in mind, it's easy. For our stop loss sits above the high as it breaks. Uh, that high would indicate buyers have regain control of the price, okay? If we put our entry at above the, the higher wick and the breakout of the support and resistance zone to say that the, because we're trading it to now reverse and go up, to say that the buyers had not just regain control of the market, but we took over the markets. And calculate, you always have to calculate your risk reward ratio because money management becomes ultimately here. Just because you're putting your stop here and your entry point here is what is your potential profit? Okay. Now, if you had calculated your target was say up here, based on when you had the prior resistance, okay? And in order to calculate your risk reward ratio, okay, at two to one, and this is where your target would be, but you had a major price level in between or a major resistance zone or some other major thing, you, you just don't make that trade. Because if you can't, see that target price coming and don't have that proper risk reward ratio, you're gonna eventually lose your money. So I always start out with my trend line on my charts. I For my general trading, I also always start, start out with my support and resistance levels. Then I look at price action and finally, I take a look at volume to confirm. Always use volume. To make your final confirmation. So in trading, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate simple concepts. Sure, some of the concepts of trading are not the sort of thing you would intuitively know, but many things are easy. You just must know what to look for. So again, I'm gonna answer one last question. Somebody asked me about timeframes to use to use these entry and exit points. I can't answer that only because at some point, your trading becomes personal to you. You have to know what your trading strategies are, what type of trading you do. Do you standard use a 30-minute chart and use a 15-minute chart to get your entry points? Do you standard use a one-hour chart and use a 30-minute chart? You have to determine what you want to do as an individual trader. Okay. So this strategy of indecision with the camp will work in any time frame. You have to determine which time frame you want to define your trading to to figure out what you want to do because your support and resistance levels won't change. And your trend up or trend down, because you know what? You can be looking at a long-term trend on an hourly chart even down, but when you put it down a 15-minute trade, you could have, you know, five candles moving green for that minute because you're in a slight reversal. So you have to make that decision on your own. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Have a great trading week.
and practice this a little bit. It's not hard. You'll learn it in no time flat. Bye now.